So the GTX 1050 Ti, it seems to have had some pretty significant price drops of late, with cards only 6 months old starting to trickle onto the used market, the new prices of these cards are dropping to reflect the fact that there are just more of them out there. It looks like the days of the £165 GTX 1050 Ti are well and truly behind us. Well, almost. Checking out eBay and some of my other GPU selling haunts, it looks like it's not too hard to find a 1050 Ti for just under £120 or about $125 in the States. So is it the go-to budget card? Well, while it's starting to finally make sense, there's still the old thorn in the side, the RX 470, and with the release of the RX 570 from AMD, the prices of these 470s are starting to take a little bit of a tumble too. Now the last official MSRP for the 470 was about $169, and used cards seem to hover between the 150 and 160 mark. But it should be noted there are a lot less of them in circulation in the used market at this point in time. So while I had the RX 570 for benchmarking, I wanted to use it in the good old budget gaming PC and underclock it to RX 470 levels to see once and for all if all the comments about the 470 being king of budget still remains true now that the 1050 Ti has seen a bit of a price drop. So for these tests we're going to be using the i5, 4590 and 8GB of DDR3 RAM as this is something that's indicative to a lower level gaming PC. So once we've run through these benchmarks we're going to take the different prices into account. $120 for the 1050 Ti and $155 for the RX 470 and see which card offers the best bang for buck as we head into the summer of 2017. So first up we've got Crisis 3 at 1080p on the high preset with a few of the other fancier effects enabled and we can see that unsurprisingly the RX 470 it is obviously a good bit ahead of the GTX 1050 Ti. Both cards, however, do manage to maintain average frame rates above that 60fps mark. It's a similar story in Battlefield 1, again in the high preset at 1080p. Both cards managing to maintain averages at 60fps or above, and with the RX 470 even managing to almost hit 60fps on the average minimums. Finally, we've got Doom run at 1080p. The RX 470 were using Vulkan, and the GTX 1050 Ti were sticking with OpenGL for this test. Unsurprisingly, the RX card absolutely walks away with this test, averaging out at 105fps with minimums well above 60fps. The GTX 1050 Ti is no slouch either, with the average minimums almost tickling that magical 60fps. So with the benchmarks complete, how do these cards currently stack up from a frames per dollar standpoint? Well, as you can see, on average it's actually really, really close. The RX 470 does have the lead in average frames per dollar in Crisis 3 and it obviously obliterates the 1050 Ti in Doom, but in Battlefield 1 you're getting pretty much identical frames per dollar here. The interesting thing however is when we go over to the minimums, and as you can see, in Doom the RX 470 it, it takes a cake, it's the best card out of the two, but on the average minimums for Crisis 3 and Battlefield 1 we can actually see that the GTX 1050 Ti is giving you higher minimum average frame rates per dollar you spend. So does this finally mean that the GTX 1050 Ti is better value? Well, it's like I said the very first time that I covered the 1050 Ti, the lower the price goes, the better a proposition it becomes. And finally, at this £120 or $120-ish dollars point, this is where the GTX 1050 Ti belongs. We've got something of a price-to-performance parity here, and no longer do those who want to buy a GPU which just sips on power or they need it for the lower-rated PSUs and a pre-built PC, no longer do they need to feel bad about buying the 1050 Ti. Yes, there are cars out there that are older, faster and actually cost a little bit less, but for those who value efficiency as well as raw FPS, they can now do so at a price to performance ratio that's actually really comparable with the RX 470. If you need raw FPS though and can stretch the extra cash for the 470, well then it's a great card. I mean, I talked about scratching that Polaris itch in my last video, so is this the card to do it for me? Well, it probably should have been, until the brilliance that is eBay's best offers landed me with this. All for a price that's lower than the MSRP of a GTX 570. But that's for another day. What I'll leave you with is, at $120 or pounds, the GTX 1050 Ti is finally starting to make a lot of sense. And we can only hope that with this Pascal refresh on the horizon, that that price finally starts creeping further towards the 100 mark. As always folks, take care, thanks for watching and remember to use the thumbs and hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you all in the comment section down below and in the next video.